Hello and welcome back to this top 85 games for the BBC Micro Countdown. Uh, in at number 80, it's a very traditional game. It's called Squares. Uh, Squares was released by uh, Head First Public Domain back in the early 90s, around 1992-93, I think. Um, Head First Public Domain were one of the many public domain outfits that were around back then, um, releasing software for a fairly small price without any kind of copyright. So you could uh, buy discs from Head First Public Domain through a paper catalogue. Um, it was run by a pair of friends, Gareth Bowden and James Treadwell. Uh, I think they ran it out of their bedroom. And Squares came on one of the discs that they sold. And uh, it's based on a very old game, actually, from the 19th century, which was originally invented by a French mathematician called Edouard Lucas. Uh, he called it La Pipo Pipette. I think a lot of people in the UK are more familiar with it uh, as under the name Dots and Boxes. So you play it usually with uh, pencil and paper and you draw a grid of dots and then you take it in turns to connect the dots together. And if you manage to make a square, uh, you claim the square for yourself. And at the end, whoever's got the most squares is the winner. So that's enough introduction. Let's have a look at squares. OK, here we go. There we are, so squares. Um, this one was obviously coded by James Treadwell rather than Gareth Bowden in this case. Um, and it tells you there that this uh, this edition is played on a 10 by 10 grid of dots. So that actually makes for a reasonably long gameplay, as we shall see. So the means by which we play the game is by entering a coordinate um, followed by another coordinate to indicate um, which two dots we want to connect. Um, and then it just explains here that if your name happens to begin with uh, C, which mine actually does, uh, then the computer's squares will be indicated with an initial of X. So, one player. You can actually play this, obviously, with a, a fellow human if you wish, but uh, this is just me. So, who goes first? Um, I think I'll go first. All right, so here we are. This is the grid, um, and I just need to indicate what uh, coordinate I want to go from and to. So I'll do A1, A2, and you can see it's joined those together. And the computer instantly plays. Um, no, no thinking involved. He just goes straight in. So uh, I'm going to go A1, B1 this time. And all right, the computer plays again, plays another line. Now... There is a temptation, of course, to think, all oh, right, well, I'll just start building up some squares over here, so I'll do B1, B2. But, of course, instantly, the computer will claim that for himself um, because it will always instinctively go for uh, whichever uh, box it can close uh, the fastest. So that kind of uh, style of play is not going to work here. So we're going to have to try something different. Um, and this, unfortunately, is where the game can become a little bit tedious in the early stages because, really... All you're doing uh, is drawing some lines on a grid um, because you can't start constructing squares too soon. Otherwise, um, what happened up in that top corner there is what will happen uh, continuously as the computer keeps on claiming the boxes that you're setting up. And you can rest assured that the computer will not uh, draw three lines connecting uh, with each other because it knows that you will then try and take that for yourself. So at this stage in the game, as um, an audio-visual entertainment, uh, it's fairly boring. Um, there's a reason why I haven't ranked it particularly highly in this uh, in this sort of game uh, countdown. It's because actually, you know, it takes a while for it to warm up. Um, I find this sort of stage of the game is actually quite dull. In fact, even Edouard Lucas, who invented the game, uh, recommended that you only really play it on a fairly small grid, um, largely because if you play it on anything too large, as, as we have here, um, it takes such a long time to actually get to a point of it becoming competitive. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, perform a bit of creative editing and spare you the tedium of watching me draw some lines on a grid. And we will come back when the game has become a little bit more exciting. So don't go away. OK, so several lines later, uh, you can see that the grid is starting to become a bit more interesting now. Now, I made a few mistakes as I was uh, getting us up to this point in the video. So you can see that the uh, computer has managed to nab a few extra squares there. But I'm fairly confident now that it's reached the stage where there's only one go that I can make which won't open up a square. And that will then force the computer to open up a square for me. So I'm going to go for A8, A9 up in the top right there. 
and now you can see the computer taking a bit longer to think because it realizes ah it is not going to be able to um, make a move without uh, without opening something up for me so let's see where he's gone he's gone over there ah oh. well he did manage to find a square that didn't reveal another square by the looks of it Ah, well, that's uh, slightly frustrating. I thought I'd uh, thought I'd outfoxed him then, and the amount of time it took to think, I thought uh, thought I was onto something, but uh, clearly not. So I think the computer's put me in the position of potentially opening something up now. So I'm going to have to be quite careful about what next move I make, otherwise it could potentially open up a tsunami of uh, squares for the computer if I'm not careful. So let's see where we can do the least amount of damage. Um, what we want to aim for is an area which is uh, sort of like a, a sort of miniature square within a square because those usually don't open up too much temptation. Um, hmm, it's not doesn't actually look like we've got many of those if I'm honest. So let's just go with, um, let's see, we don't want to open up any long lines of boxes. So maybe what we'll do is just close off uh, something up at the top there so let's do b1 b uh, b1 c1 there we go so he now do you know what i i i'm obviously not uh, not not too bright at this game because the computer keeps on finding places that i didn't think existed <laughs> On the grid is now uh, placed another move which uh, forces me to, uh, or at least I, I think forces me not to uh, be able to make another move and another go. So let's go a5, a6. All right, he'll claim that one. Now, hopefully, this will start to reach the point where I can start to make some squares. There we go. So if I now go a8, b8, that gives me a square finally. a9, b9. There we go, and I can get, keep going, A9, A0. Ah, unfortunately that's uh, brought me to the end of uh, my uh, abilities there. I'm slightly concerned that the computer hasn't actually scored any of my squares yet. Um, so, let's see, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any more squares on this go. So, let's try not to open up too much for the computer, um, if at all possible which I'm not actually sure that it is, so I might have to just go for it. I don't think I'm going to win anyway, so let's uh, let's go D2, D2. Oops, Oop, made a mistake there. Uh, D2, E2. All right. Okay. Ah, there we are. Now, that gives us a bit of a better run, doesn't it? Uh, B5, C5, uh, B6, C6, B7, C7. There we are, B uh, was that B8, C8, B9, C9, B0, C0, uh, oh, we can keep going, we can go C3, C4, oh, look at this, C4, D4, C5, D4, wow, look, it's really, picking... oops, might help if I completed my coordinates there, really picking up some speed, uh, okay, C8, D8, C9, D9, Oh, I think we're going to open up yet another row here. D9, D0. Wow, this is quite exciting. D9, E9. Maybe, just maybe, I might stand a bit of a chance. E7, E7. D6, E6. Now, far more skillful players than me probably uh, know ways of setting up the grid in the early sort of stages of the game so that you can actually open up these kinds of possibilities i'm not going to credit myself with that ability um i was basically just placing lines any old place so that i could get to a point in the video where it became a bit more interesting for you watching um right well that's uh, certainly boosted my score somewhat so i'm going to force the computer into that box within a box just to ensure that he doesn't get too many uh, too many boxes on his next go so he'll be able to claim those, and now he's forced into opening up another row of boxes for me. Um, the computer is generally not um, particularly clever when it comes to deciding where to place a line once it knows that it can't avoid opening up boxes. It tends to just go for the first one that it can, that it can identify. 
um, which of course if you're playing this against um, a fellow human it's very unlikely that you would have chosen that particular place that uh, it's just used because obviously it opens up an entire line of boxes um, which is you know not what you want to do really if you're playing for for, for victory um, okay well that's managed to get another row of uh, boxes for me now Having said all of what I just said, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to prevent the computer from um, pretty much wiping out the rest of what's available because the way that the game grid is set up, we haven't got many choices here. So let's go for H1, H2. Oh, here we go. Look, he's on a run now. Ooh, but right, he's reached the end. And I have a feeling I might be able to complete the game now. I hear you cry with relief, I'm sure. Ah, no, not quite. Oh, no, yes, no, I can still keep going. I can do I5, I6. Here we are. Now, I apologise if this is not perhaps the most exciting of the uh, game reviews that I've done so far um, in terms of what you're watching. It's... Uh, but if you appreciate uh, a game of strategy, um, which I certainly do, even though I'm not particularly good at them, um, I hope that you'll at least see the appeal of this uh, of this particular game. Um, it actually has some fairly fond memories for me because I used to play it on uh, pen and paper with my cousins, actually. They were uh, big fans of this game. Um, well, look at that. Uh, not so much on the BBC Micro, but because of playing it with my cousins as I did... Um, Obviously, when this game came out for the Beeb, uh, it gave me great satisfaction to be able to play just against the computer, especially when I could beat it. There you go. Look at that. Well done, Colin. I didn't expect to get to that point, I have to say, especially given the number of uh, mistakes I made trying to just get the grid set up and the fact that I made a few unforced errors um, when I resumed the video uh, after setting up the grid. But there you go. Um, that's Squares. I think uh, you all agree with me that we don't want to play it again. Um, but, you know, it is good fun. Uh, it's a good way of uh, passing the time. And uh, I think, you know, it, it comes in at number 80 because it's not overly exciting. But it's still it's still a, a good game to, to pass the time to sort of idle away um, a, few, a few minutes here and there. And, uh, you know, it's got some strategy to it as well. So there you go. You can thank Edouard Lucas and uh, the uh, the two guys at uh, Head First Public Domain, James Treadwell and Gareth Bowden, for that one. And I hope you'll join me next time and that this hasn't put you off too much uh, and that you'll join me for uh, the next video in the series. Until then, goodbye.